Okay, this is a huge upgrade. This is the Magic Mouse, but it feels brand new. There's only one thing left to check. It's time to charge. October 20th, 2009, Apple introduced the Magic Mouse. It was a revolutionary new input device, blending a traditional computer mouse with a touchscreen. There was just one problem. It wasn't designed for human hands. Okay, okay, maybe it wasn't designed for people with larger hands. You see, most computer mice are shaped like the palm of your hand, so you can use it comfortably all day. But the Magic Mouse is shaped like a pancake. It's incredibly flat. It doesn't fit in your hand. Your hand just sort of collapses down onto the Magic Mouse, which feels uncomfortable. Look, I know there are millions of people out there who love the Magic Mouse, and honestly, I just want to be one of them. I want this mouse to work for me, but the ergonomics prevent me from doing so. But don't take it from me, just look at some of Apple's other computer mice, like the Apple Pro Mouse, which is not flat, or the Apple Mighty Mouse, also not flat, or the good old Apple Hockey Puck from the 90s, which was weird, but critically not flat. So why did Apple abandon the comfort and ergonomics of their other mice for the flat pancake design of the Magic Mouse? Ladies and gentlemen, I present legendary Apple designer, Johnny Ive. I love the way that it scales from being something that is that apparently simple to actually being really remarkably sophisticated. I mean, when you first see the mouse, it could not be any simple. In other words, Apple was trying to keep things simple. This was 2009, and they were probably concerned that users were not ready for a touch surface that wasn't perfectly flat like a smartphone. But now it's 2023, and I wanna take matters into my own hands. I'm going to try and fix all of my problems with the Magic Mouse, and then I'm going to take my newly upgraded Magic Mouse and put it head to head with some of my other favorite mice for the Mac. Up first was fixing the ergonomics of the mouse to make it more comfortable. To get there, we're going to use this. This is an accessory called the mouse base. It's an accessory that fixes my number one problem with the Magic Mouse by changing its shape, making it easier to hold on to and more comfortable to use. But I've never heard of this thing before and was a bit skeptical it could really live up to that promise and decided to put it to the test. Okay, here we go. Popping this bad boy in. I should probably mention the way this mouse base accessory works is kind of strange. When you put the magic mouse up in the air like this case does, you have to find a way for the laser to reach the ground. And so the mouse base actually has these mirrors which redirect the laser down to the desk surface. And what I'm afraid is happening, the laser is less powerful and less accurate because it's bouncing off of these mirrors to reach the desk. So I'm gonna to try to mess with some cursor settings and see what I can figure out. Okay, so what I think is going on, these mirrors are what allow the mouse base to work, but I think there's some signal loss, but the laser is less powerful when it's bouncing through the mirrors. On this mouse mat, the performance is great, but on this reflective wooden table, I can tell that the laser is struggling. If you use a mouse mat, you're probably fine. On a super reflective, glossy table like this, the mouse base may struggle. But on my desk, I always use a mouse mat, so I should be good to go. And with the mouse base installed, I've fixed my first problem with the Magic Mouse. The ergonomics are just so much better than the original Magic Mouse, it's now comfortable to use all day. But the Magic Mouse has a second, much more famous problem that I need to fix. Yes, I'm talking about the charging port on the bottom of the mouse. Okay, so to fix this charging situation, I need to, oh, oh, sorry, let me, let me take this. Ugh, another spam call. I'm actually really tired of these robocalls interrupting me when I'm recording a video, which is why I'm excited to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Incogni. Incogni is a data privacy service that can help reduce incoming spam messages and robocalls by helping you take control of your personal data on the open internet. But how? Well, unfortunately, every day our personal information is collected and sold by groups known as data brokers. And these data brokers sell our information to advertisers 
advertisers, which results in, you guessed it, robocalls, sketchy emails, and spam texts. And this entire shady process is perfectly legal, which feels like an unwinnable battle. But that's where Incogni can make a difference. Once you sign up, all you have to do is answer a few simple questions and Incogni does the rest. They go directly to the data brokers and submit formal requests to have your personal data removed. And while my main concern was reducing robocalls, Incogni goes beyond the spam by protecting you from serious cyber crimes like identity theft. And they're currently offering 60% off for anyone who uses my code or uses my link in the description below. So thank you to Incogni for helping me take control of my personal information online and for sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's get back to the Magic Mouse where, yes, as you already know, the charger is famously on the bottom. This whole charger on the bottom of the Magic Mouse situation is just fascinating to me. You see, Apple used to have this slogan. Steve Jobs would get up on stage, hold up some new device and say, it just works the way it ought to. So it all just works. It just all works. But the charger on the bottom of the Magic Mouse doesn't just work. It's a mouse that you can't use when it's charging. And if you're curious how we got here, let me refresh you. The first Magic Mouse, the one that came out in 2009, actually ran on AA batteries. But the second generation Magic Mouse, which was introduced in 2015, replaced the AA's with a rechargeable battery, which should have been a great thing. But to save some money, Apple decided not to redesign the rest of the mouse around the new battery. They kept almost all of the components the same and just slapped a lightning port on the bottom where the battery door used to be. And they've continued to manufacture and sell this Magic Mouse design for eight years. But now it's time to do what Apple doesn't want to. I'm gonna fix the charger on my Magic Mouse so that I can actually use it while it's charging. So here's the plan. The mouse base has this fake lightning connector that the mouse clicks into. It doesn't do anything, it just keeps the Magic Mouse in place. I'm going to replace this fake connector with one of these, a tiny lightning to USB-C connector. After that, I just need to route this new USB-C charging port towards the front of the mouse so I can finally use the Magic Mouse while it's being charged. Now I know what you're thinking, wouldn't this whole project be easier with a 3D printer? And the answer is yes, but I don't know where to begin. And so instead of a 3D printer, I will be using a power drill and a glue gun. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, hey everyone, it's Nick Mo from the future. I just wanted to let you know that what you're about to watch is a total disaster. I'm about to make some pretty bad decisions. So please sit back and relax and laugh at my pain. So at first I thought this would be simple. I was just gonna drill a hole in the side of the mouse base and make a sort of DIY port for the charging cable. That did not go according to plan. So I'm using a 90 degree lightning to USB-C adapter and then just routing the cable through the interior of the mouse base. I wanted to get fancy and do, you know, like a cool port on the side here. I was gonna like, like I wanted to keep this internal inside the case, uh, but it turns out that is a very difficult thing to do if you're not printing your own mouse case, essentially. This is, yeah, so it absolutely does not look good. <laughs> It's a little rough, it's a little rough around the edges, but the more important thing is it works, or at least I hope it works. Through normal use, you know, basically I don't bump into this little charging port I've added. So let's hope that this tension that I've put on the charger uh, did not ruin it. This is the moment of truth. Now I just need my USB-C cable plugged into the front. It's, it's not exactly what you want. It's coming out the front. This is, this is like off to the side. Uh, the point is, it may look a little strange, but the mouse absolutely, you know, it works like this. But now it's time to see if this thing will actually charge still. So um, please, please work. Oh man, please work. And for a moment, I thought I'd done it. My magic mouse was saved. This video was gonna be a success. But then, disaster. Okay, it's... It's charging, this is, the mouse is absolutely receiving power, but for some reason my cursor is not uh, visible on screen. Oh my God. What the f This, this has gotta be a joke. Oh my God. The magic mouse knows that the charger's on the bottom. And so when it's receiving power, the mouse turns itself off. The mouse cursor 
won't move. The mouse won't work while it's charging because Apple knows the charger's on the bottom. I did all of this without ever Googling, can you use a magic mouse while it's charging? So I took some time to collect myself and reflect on what just happened. Uh, during my break, I came across a video that was posted last year by Unnecessary Inventions, who is an amazing creator, by the way, and he basically fell into the same trap that I did. He created a Magic Mouse upgrade only to discover that the internal controller prevents you from using it while charging. Well, at least I'm not alone. As for my hacked together ultimate magic mouse, it's ugly, but somehow it works. The mouse base does make the magic mouse more ergonomic, and while it doesn't charge while in use, my cable mod at least allows me to charge with USB-C instead of having to keep another lightning cable by my desk. And it saves me the five seconds of having to flip the mouse over. Look, I know it's a small victory, but I need this. But before this magical project was over, there was one last twist. I came across a video from a YouTuber called Excessify Tech, which I will link in the description. And in the video, he was reviewing a Magic Mouse accessory that not only makes the Magic Mouse more ergonomic, but it adds wireless charging. What? What? Wait, and this thing's only 23 bucks? Come on. As much as it hurts to admit, this wireless charging grip for the Magic Mouse is pretty comfortable. The shape is similar to my Logitech G Pro Wireless. In other words, it gives the Magic Mouse a more traditional shape, which is far more comfortable than the original Magic Mouse in my hands. And of course, there's the killer feature, wireless charging. No, you still can't use the mouse while it's charging, Apple has made sure of that, but when it is time to charge, having a wireless charging pad is just so much easier easier than flipping the mouse over and fishing out a lightning cable. Anytime I need to step away from my desk, I just slide the mouse over to this wireless charging pad and now my magic mouse never runs out of power. It's a really solid upgrade for anyone who enjoys the magic mouse and I wish I had discovered this product, I don't know, maybe a week ago? That would have been great. So what have we learned? Well, for starters, Apple and Johnny Ive, I owe you an apology. It turns out product design is hard. So the only thing left to do is determine which of these upgraded magic mice is the best, and are either of them better than the competition. In terms of overall comfort and ergonomics, the mouse base was my favorite option. It makes the magic mouse fit naturally in my hands. Now, there is a trade-off for this comfort. You do lose a little bit of accuracy and power to the mouse laser, so it's not flawless. As for my mods to the mouse base, like the custom charging setup, I don't recommend anyone follows in my footsteps. But if your biggest issue with the Magic Mouse is the charger, then the best option here is the wireless charging grip. I could see this being the best overall option for a lot of people. But if you just want the same experience that you get on your MacBook, but on your desk, just go for the Magic Trackpad and skip the Magic Mouse altogether. Thanks for watching Work From Hype. If you like this sort of thing, then you may wanna check out the desk gadgets I regret buying. Or if you want to see me win for a change, check out this video about my favorite tablet of 2023. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.